Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. You are gonna learn how to make this crumb cake quilt right here. This right here, it's a new quilting notion. You're gonna have to watch this entire video to find out how I use this right here as a quilting tool. Why would I ever call this beautiful fabric right here reject fabric? Well, in my last tutorial, I made this beautiful quilt from a picture that my daughter had sent me from a TikTok. She wanted this beautiful blue quilt. So I went to Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, all the stores. I ended up with a ton of reject fabrics that I did not use. And since I had so much fabric left over from this quilt, it was a no brainer for me to make another blue quilt. <laughs> but this time, it was going to be with a technique that I absolutely feel my most creative at, crumb cake piecing. It's that time in the video where I give a shout out to all of my newest Sewing Channel supporters. I am so thankful for each and every one of you to even just take the time to watch my video and to subscribe and to even donate toward my channel. You're amazing. Thank you so much, Heidi S., for that coffee. I appreciate your support. Someone named everyone this week bought me three coffees. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> you all are killing me with that. Thank you for the coffee, Linda L. I am so grateful to someone who also bought me a coffee. Yep, their name is someone. <laughs> Thank you to a Sewing Channel fan. They bought me three coffees. Thank you. I appreciate you, Carol R., for that coffee. Terry S., I appreciate you too. Thank you for those three coffees. Thank you, Quilting Friend 1. That takes the Sewing Channel supporter list up to 15. I am so grateful. Enough talking already. Let's get busy. This video ain't getting any shorter. <laughs> This quilt hanging here is my original crumb cake quilt. I enjoyed making this quilt right here so much. This to me was major fun. In today's video, we are going to change things up a bit from the original crumb cake recipe. Here I just want to give you an idea of how I actually construct the crumb cake quilt block. You want to take and fussy cut out a bigger focus fabric. Now it can be just a busy pattern if you don't have anything to fussy cut. This one had a big enough floral that I thought, yeah, it would work as a fussy cut focal point. You can cut out any size of focal point that you want. This is where it gets so creative. And piece a couple pieces together, whatever you have, and connect it here. Once those get connected and you press those, then it's time to add the next piece of fabric, and the next, and then the next. You are creating a log cabin quilt block effect here. No need to pre-measure anything. We're just gonna jump right into it and I'll show you how I do it. Before I get started though, I wanted to share with you the trifecta or the quadfecta or whatever you wanna call it. It's how I get my crumb piecing to be so efficient. Here I have my cutting station with all my fabrics that I'm going to use in this quilt. I have my rotary cutter. I have a few different rulers because as it gets bigger, you're going to need to trim bigger pieces. And of course, just a pair of scissors handy close by. Once I get things cut the way I want, I then put them together and I go right here to my sewing machine. I piece what I need and then I pivot while still sitting because I'm standing here at the cutting station. I find I'm more accurate in cutting if I'm standing, but once I piece it, I pivot while I'm on my chair on wheels <laughs> to my ironing station here. I press it and then I can pop it right up here. We have station one, two, three, and then back to four here. On the design board. Okay, it's time to fight against me and my neighbor who's mowing their lawn right now. Let's see who wins. <laughs> so I've just taken a piece of fabric and cut it into this whatever shape. I don't even know what size it is, but I'll tell you for reference. It is approximately 12 and a half inches by approximately eight and a half inches. During this whole technique though, I don't measure anything. 
not one time. So I have this scrap pile here that I had left over from the original quilt. I even cut some pieces from this and put it in here so that way I had just some random pieces to choose from so I could show you how to make this. What I'm looking for here is a lighter piece of fabric in contrast to this one. And it could be one whole piece, or even if I wanted to connect to another piece, I could. Here, this one right here. So I have this piece, I pulled this one, and I pulled this rectangle blue piece. Since this one is about the same size and width here, I am going to just line that up there and take it right here to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a quarter inch. I'm going to pivot this way and then I'm going to just press. For this quilt, it does not matter which side you're pressing to. It just doesn't. Actually, whichever side it wants to go to, that's where I press it. <laughs> so then I'm back up here now. So before I get to that design wall, I am pivoting between these three stations right here and they're all right here. I don't have to get up for anything. At this point, this is the ruler that I'm going to grab. I'm going to trim this up. When I try to find my line here to trim it, I find a line on my ruler and line it up with that seam that I just made because I know that that's a straight seam. Next, I'm just going to take this, butt that up against there. I may leave just a hairline of a space there just to make sure that I clear that area that it's long enough there. And I know I have that all there to cut off, but that's okay. I'm gonna still flip that like so. Come over to my sewing machine and sew that quarter inch down. My seam wants to go this way, so guess what? That's which way it's gonna go. I don't fuss around when it comes to that stage because if it wants to go that way, I mean, why fight against resistance, right? So this is connected onto here. Now it's time to cut that piece off. For this quilt too, I am going to go a little bit bigger than crumb piecing. They're not going to be as tiny as these right here since I'm working with a lot of fabric. <laughs> we should have probably called this the large extra hungry crumb cake tutorial. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so now I need to find a piece to go along this edge because remember we are going in a log cabin design. So I connected it over here. Now I need to connect a strip here, but I need to first find a piece that I want to go there. I could piece ahead of time three pieces in that strip to go there if I wanted to, or I could put just one solid piece. It's up, totally up to you. I think this stripe is going to go very nicely there. So I'm just gonna line it up there and make sure that I have enough, which I do. So now I know that that's gonna fit and I will have to cut extra off there, which is no big deal, and a little bit off of that edge. So I'll put right sides together. Go to the sewing machine. You see how everything is nicely right where I need it to be. Pivot this way to the ironing station. Check and see which way does it want to go. It wants to go that way. Well, I'm going to give it what it wants. Okay, back up here. So I'm gonna place it around there. So I know I need to cut this excess off. Put that in that pile. 
Now I can take this piece right here, lift it up and over, right sides together, line it up. If you end up having a stubborn seam too, you can always spritz it with water. That little bit of water, believe it or not, just loosens things up just enough to where you can press that nice and flat. It's amazing. Too much steam though and heat will actually shrink your fabric, so be careful. This is when things get a little bit bigger. I grab my larger ruler. I'm lining up with a seam, a couple different seams actually, that's on this piece. And then trimming it. I trim all the sides before I go on to the next step. that piece on there. Now we need to find a piece to fit this over here. How about that piece and that piece? Yep, I think that works. So I need to attach these first. This kind of piecing is therapy to me. I don't know about you all, but I could just do this for a really long time. <laughs> now, my family probably thinks I'm crazy, but oh well. So I'm gonna flip this. You see how I decided on that one how to flip it. If I turned it this way, it would be too much dark next to each other and these two look alike too much. So I flip it like this, and then all of a sudden I have contrast. So hopefully you can see how that worked out. Flip that over. The only thing I wouldn't put right next to each other is a seam like that, that seam right up to that, because then you would have bulk there. So what I'm going to do is just shift it. I'm gonna shift it right up to that salvage right there so that it matches up along there. And that way it adds more interest too. Let's trim this one up. I'm looking for lines on my ruler to match up with these seams. Get it in a really good spot where things look straight. This is what we have so far, looking good. For this edge right here, let's put three fabrics together so that way you can see what that looks like. So let's try and find, maybe we should do a skinny one, I don't know. That's, that's the fun of this right here. You can just do whatever, it's awesome.
maybe we'll do four fabrics. Nope, have that one. This is exactly how I figure things out as I go. So I know that I need a piece that's this length right here. So I've just pulled these and I think that those right there will cover it. The main thing is we gotta make sure that we have straight seams when we connect. So this one seems to be a little off. So I'll just go in real quick and straighten it out. So first thing I do is connect these two together. This one is next. So we have that so far. And I think I am going to trim this before I add this one on just because I want everything to be, you know, have a square angle. You know, you gotta make sure that your lines and everything match on your ruler with the seams. So this one we can save and put back in that pile because that's going to go on something else. We'll definitely find a spot for that. not straight though. Okay. Let me just check this edge. Looks kind of wonky too. <laughs> That's the biggest thing is just making sure if you want everything to be nice, nice and straight. I mean, just make sure that you have straight edges before you sew them together. And for this one, I do. I want everything to have a good, um, you know, square angle. I don't know. Sometimes I get in those moods, sometimes I don't care. But for this one, I, I that's what I'd like. Line that up. I always look back to see if I'm gonna hit the chair or not, because wouldn't that be terrible if I went to sit down and I fell? Oh my goodness. If I fell, that might put me out of sewing for a while and we don't want that, right? No. Okay, let's get this trimmed off. You know, honestly, now that I'm looking at these fabrics that I did not use, I'm a little surprised I didn't use them because they seem like they go now, but at the time when I was making the other blue quilt, it just, it didn't flow right with these fabrics. Okay, so. Now it's time to connect this over here. Let's see, how did I have it? <laughs> I even forget, perfect. So you can see there, everything is lined up and I'm just going to flip this, line it up and sew it up. Let's just trim this up. The beauty of this block right here is that you can keep going around and around and around if you want. Or you can stop if you're not sure, like me, how big you're gonna make this quilt. You can just make blocks, a ton of them like this. You can make them larger than this and smaller than this and just put them up 
on your design wall. And after you get enough of them up on your design wall, you then see, well, I need to add a little bit more here in order to connect these together and then so on. And I'll show you all that. Flop this up here like so, and then we'll just keep going. Once I get to a certain point, I then put those big blocks that I made earlier up on my design board and I try to figure out where they best fit. So if you look here, these two are about the same length. So if I connect those two together, then I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> and once I connect these two together, I can already see that this one that I have lined up here is about mm, a quarter of an inch too short. So I'll then add this one to these two, but then I will trim that quarter of an inch off so it makes it even. In cases like this, I will add another strip here and any strip in between where I see fit that it needs to go. <laughs> right here, I can already tell that there's a big chunk that I need to put there and possibly over here. So I will have to do a few more strip piecings. I know that my design wall, the way I have it, once my blocks hit the floor and are all the way out to the sides of this gray, that's when I know that I have pretty much the size quilt that I want. That's the typical size I make, which is about, I don't know, 65 to 70 wide and up to 89 inches in length or so. So up to that point, I'll keep putting things together until I see the size that I want. So I will get these all connected and get to a certain point and then I'll show you how I input the strips. At this point, I wanted to share with you what happens when I have all one chunk in the bottom, I have all one chunk done in the center, and then you're kind of left with what's left. <laughs> At this point, I figure out for sure the width, which I believe this is about 65 inches in width here this one whole piece connected. The bottom piece here, I still have to cut it to fit the 65 inches, but I won't do that until I connect these two pieces together and then I will make a for sure solid cut there. From the top of this right here, these blocks, and then a little bit more on the bottom added to those bottom blocks and filling in these spots here, then my quilt top will be complete. <laughs> so I still have some work to do. This is the part that I'm gonna focus on right now. Before I add any more to the sides of this, I'm going to add a strip on the top or the bottom of this on the longer edge, and then I'll continue to add so that I have enough right there to finish that block off. So that's what we're working on. And here I'm just checking at some of the strips that I already had cut off of other things that may work. I don't really like that one though. <laughs> oh my goodness, I got so much stuff over here. Holy moly. I can actually add one whole strip of this to the bottom area right here because this isn't gonna clash with anything right there. Perfect. Okay, so we'll just pop that on here and get back to that trifecta or quadfecta, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Today we are fighting with my other neighbor out here who's doing their lawn, so. trim that edge and then we will work on the rest of it. Now I don't think it has to be this thick so in the end I'll probably end up trimming some of this off but I'm not going to trim it off until I absolutely know that I don't need it all. Because I've done that before and been like oh man oh, 
I could have used that extra inch or something crazy like that. You know, it happens all the time in quilting, all the time. So if it happens to you, just suck it up buttercup and add to it in the end if you accidentally cut it off prematurely. Let's take a look here. So you can see that's going to hit the bottom of that over there. It's going to be fine. And then this top portion. So now we need to come up with a block to fit here. Okay, you can see here that I already have one that I cut off of something else. So that's going to work perfectly. So I'm going to set that one there because I'm going to definitely use it. And then here's another one too that I had cut up. And I'm just gonna look here for pieces like that. Here's another one. Because I like to use them up if I've already sewn them and trimmed them. Oh my goodness, so much, so much. We don't have a lot of this one in there, so we'll add, we'll add a light in there. So I'm just gonna trim off a little piece there. That. Aha, here, here's another one. See? Lots of gems up in this little pile, right? But look and see here all of this that I still totally have left. I mean, honestly, you can literally make tons and tons and tons of quilts out of just random stuff. It's crazy. I mean, I have so many potential quilts in this sewing room that it's insane. So, so that one will cover that entire spot. So that's what we'll do. We'll just we'll go ahead and match that up. And then I'm going to go ahead and just cut this right close to the seam that it was connected to on this one. We'll flip this over and sew a quarter inch. Since this one is not straight, I'm gonna trim that one right away because I don't wanna get caught up in that bowed effect. When you start to see any of your fabric bowing, you need to check yourself and check your work and just, you know, make sure. Make sure that you're not off anywhere. But look at that bow. I mean, that's huge in quilting. Oh my goodness. I could. Put it like that that looks interesting right i took these two pieces that were already sewn together add it to this light and then i can add it to that i think that's going to work out perfect whoever thinks that these irons don't get hot oh my goodness they for sure get hot trust me i can guarantee you that these get so hot that i've burnt myself just on hot fabric I've pressed it you know I like to go through with my hand I don't know why I think it's just habit I think we all do because I've even seen other quilters on YouTube they'll iron something and then they'll like that with their hand and I don't know why if you do that let me know in the comments because that's I don't know if that's just a trait of quilters or people who sew in general but it's kind of funny <laughs> we all do it it's weird See, I just did it again. We, I don't know why we do that. It's kind of funny. So you can see here, I'm going to be adding this probably, I'll be connecting it there. So that's about as big as I want to go. Wait a minute, do I want to go that way instead? Yeah, I want to go that way. Yeah, that's what I want to do. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now, since I have it, I initially was thinking I was going this way with it, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna go this way. And I'm gonna go ahead and connect this one to this one. Right now, while we're here.
And if we have to cut off any excess, it's okay because I'll just put it right in the scrap pile. And you know what? We'll save it for something else. It's better to have too much fabric than not enough to cover, so. Oh, I like the way this one looks. It's just so like organic to me. I just, I love it. See that? So pretty. So I had it like that. So I can see here that this is going to hit that. And you know what? At this point in the game, it's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. So all I need to do here is add another chunk here, and then we're going to connect these two together. So let's get that done so we can move on with our life, right? <laughs> okay, so we need something to go along there. Hmm. This one, I could totally use this. So I'm just going to hold that up there. So the width of this right here is going to work. So I'm going to cut off this salvage first. I'm thinking about four inches we'll cut. Seems like a good number, right? Why not? Remember, anything goes in crumb cake quilting or extra hungry crumb cake quilting. <laughs> Whatever you call it, anything goes. Let's see this one. Nope. That one does not make the cut. But so I want you to take a look here. So if I take the width of that and I lay that one up there, I can then try to find another piece that I could connect to here that will match up to that. And that's what I'm going to do. At this point, we can add those two together. Oh, this hair. <laughs> Sorry, my hair is quite crazy. Oh, this hair. I actually like how that looks. It looks really cute. Over here, and we are I'm going to turn it that way. So we just need to add this much more onto here, which is actually quite a bit more. <laughs> it just seems like this quilt goes on and on and on and on, and that's okay, because I'm totally here for it. Are you? I'm here for it. I love this piece right here because it has full patchwork quilting squares already, which totally adds to the effect of this quilt. If you can find something like that, that's golden if you're making a crumb cake quilt. So I'm gonna totally add that to here. Now let's see what we got. Yep, I think it's gonna totally cover. We will actually flip it like that. So that way, this piece right here kind of goes over there. You know, I, I don't, oh, but then look, those two are together. Okay, so let's do it this way. This is how we're going to do it. We're just going to do it. We're going to flip it like that. We're not going to think about it. We're not going to just, we're not going to think about it at all. We're just going to put those two together. And if two pieces are touching, we just, we'll make that rule for ourselves right now that we just don't really care. I have to make that rule for myself. Otherwise, I will think about it too much. Oh my gosh, my iron's not even on. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. I don't know, it must have been just still hot when I pressed the other one because the other one did get pressed, but I don't know. It happens, things we do. Look 
at that nice, big, beautiful crumb cake quilt block. <laughs> this one is going to get connected to that one right there. Yep, and we're going to do it right now. We're going to connect it. Now, since this piece is bigger, I am going to put some pins in it. Now, the only reason why I'm putting pins in it is because sometimes it wants to get away from me at the sewing machine when I have so much here. It wants to flop around, and then that pulls at where I'm trying to sew, and that's why I do tend to pin when I get this size. Pin. All right, let's sew this up. I mean, this is a little bit more matchy-matchy right here than what I normally would totally do, but I'm gonna pretend like I don't see it and I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> oh my goodness, really. I really have to work hard at not seeing that though. Oh my goodness, I see it. I totally see it. But remember, make your own rules as you go. Pick and choose what your battles are when it comes to crumb piecing. What do you think? Pretty cool. Okay, which way does it go up on my board now? Um, that's the thing, I get confused when I try to figure out which way I had it. Hmm. Is it this way? I think this the strip that we added is going to make this perfect as far as how much more we need to add to there and the overall length of the whole quilt. The next step is to piece together a big long strip just like we did over there to make sure that it's as long as this piece is before we connect it. We are finally at the point where we are going to connect this top piece right here that's been already connected and you can see right here that I have not trimmed off anything yet. So we're going to take this big, huge piece and connect it to that bottom piece. And we're going to pin it, though, because it's going to be a lot to handle. Let's get this pinned and sewn so we can see what the entire quilt top looks like. I wanted to share with you, when you're at the sewing machine with all of this bulk, what I did here was just accordion fold all of this length because I just had that small panel piece and then the other three quarters of the quilt, that part needed to be folded accordion style. So that way I didn't have all this drag coming down my sewing machine table as I'm sewing this. So even this bottom piece, I kind of just, you know, lift up a little bit there. So then I'm able to see this area right here that I'm going to be sewing. And have your pin cushion handy by so that you can just take your pins out and throw them in the pin cushion. Make sure though that that accordion fold is not anywhere near here because you don't want to sew that all together. That would be horrible. So here I'm just going to spritz that seam a little bit to help loosen that up because I always work with a dry iron. So I'm just first doing a quick press to the one side, the way that it wants to go the most, which could be whichever way at this point because there are so many seams in this quilt.
this is the point where I get so excited. I mean, you can really see how your quilt has all come together at this point, and it's just really amazing. All this nice, calm, therapeutic work that we do to our quilts, it all comes together at the end, and it's just awesome. Next, I'm going to trim the sides up so that they all match, because you can see here how this is shorter than those. So we're gonna even everything up. So the first thing that I'm going to establish is where the shortest side is on the side of my quilt. And it happens to be this right here. It was that middle panel. So now I'm going to use that as my guide. I'm going to take my big ruler and I'm going to line up the edge of the ruler along here, but I'm also going to be looking in here to find lines on my ruler to match up along the seams. I'm going to trim this off. So that was somewhere in the middle of my side. So I'm gonna shift this up and catch the bottom here. Now we can lift this back up toward the other end. Trim all this off. Slice it off. So I'll get that other side done and then we'll take a look at it. After everything is all trimmed up, you're going to put a stay stitch all around the entire quilt. This will ensure that these seams right here do not come undone as we're messing with it and quilting it and all that. Go nice and slow and come in about an eighth of an inch all the way around the entire quilt top. Here I've taken and just folded my quilt top in half and then in half again so that all of my corners are right on top of each other. Because I'm going to do a rounded corner on this quilt just like I did in the last video. Now I don't always do a rounded corner. I've even done like a half hexy corner. You can do whatever you like here as far as corners go. You could even do a scalloped edge if you wanted to. If by chance when you fold your fabric two times to expose these corners here, if they don't match up perfectly, it's okay to take and round these corners one by one instead of stack together like I'm about to do it. Now for that, I'm going to use my trusty Pyrex bowl. I love this bowl, it's my favorite. <laughs> So I'm just going to take and line this up somewhere close to the edge here. Usually I use my heat erasable pen, but I have my pencil close by, so I'm just gonna use that. And I'm just going to mark right around this bowl. Ugh. Don't drag it. So don't drag it like I just did and mess up your layers. So you can see here where I ended here and where I ended here. This is where I'm going to start cutting and I'm going to just kind of meet those two up. I'm gonna pin right here and right here. So on both sides of that line, I pinned. Now I'm simply going to just take and start trimming right along that mark I made. Take out that pin, and then you have four perfectly rounded corners. Beautiful. Some of you might be asking me, well, why did I round the corners right now? And just like in my last video, I'm gonna tell you the same thing. Whenever you're using a wrap around backing binding, you need to cut the shape that you want to begin with. And then when we sandwich 
the quilt top and the minky together. We quilt it just how we want it. And then we're going to take and trim however much we want to fold over onto the quilt top, making our binding. So then at that point, everything is trimmed here. So all we have to do is worry about cutting our minky binding about an inch or so away, folding it over, and then sewing it. My quilt top is all put together, stay stitched all the way around, the rounded corners are cut, and now it's time to deal with the backing. In my last tutorial, I shared with you how I bought the backing at the Dollar General. They were just two throw blankets that I had sewn together. Well, I actually had sewn those together and cut them prematurely because I didn't realize with the measurement that I needed that I could have sewed both blankets or plush blankets, throw blankets, if you will, with long sides and long sides together. So that meant I had to put a bunch of different seams in and you know, it worked in the end, but it was just a lot more work for me. But this time I happened to go to the local Goodwill right after I had made that other quilt and I found yet two more plush blankets that were brand new in the package. They were the same brand as the other ones, but just in dark blue and they had like a diamond pattern. And I thought, this is fate. I totally need to make this crumb cake quilt and back it with this and you know. But this time I was gonna be smart about it. I was going to put the long sides together instead of going up and down with the blankets because this way doing it long ways I will definitely have enough to cover my quilt top. Some of you might not know about press and seal and all I did here why I have a tiny one is I took the long tube and I cut it in half. If you go to cut yours in half like I did try not to squeeze that center area it's super hard not to do though I can assure you and some of mine got crunched kind of and glued together sort of because I smushed it. But if you can get them cut in half, they're a lot nicer to work with than using one big long roll of it. I've already taken my two plush velvet throws. I put right sides together. I layered it with some of the press and seal on one side of the inside and then the other side of the inside. That's going to help with a lot of flyaways and flurries in the sewing room. Once you cut plush, it tends to cause a snowstorm in your sewing room and you don't want that. The press and seal really does help with that. It also helps with shifting as well. You don't see any of that shifting that you may get if you don't use it. After that, I then took my extra jumbo clips, I will link these below, and clipped all the way down. You can see the line right there. There's nothing puckered at all on the back. Very nice. So I want you to see here, I am gonna get some flurries because I did not go all the way. So you can see, <laughs> so I kind of defeated my purpose there. But I'm gonna continue on and I'm just gonna get my sweeper out. But here I'm just cutting about a quarter of an inch away from that seam that I just made. So you just wanna cut that off and then tear off this right here, and I'll show you what that looks like real quick. So I don't have to cut film here. So you just pull, pull off until you get all of this off and out of the seam. So I'll do that, I'll cut the rest, and then I'll show you what a beautiful seam that this literally gives. I mean, 
gorgeous, right? You can't even see it. I want you to take note of that seam right there. Look at how flawless that seam is. It's beautiful. The next thing to do is to take it over to the sewing machine now and look at it from the wrong side and stitch down right along this area on both sides, being sure to tack these wings down so that way when we go to free motion quilt, everything is nice and flat and there's the least amount of bulk as possible. So this is the outside right here the side that we'll be cuddled with. That looks pretty good. There's no puckering that I can see right off hand in any portion of it. So that's good to know that you don't need to double do your press and seal because that stuff is hard to get out. So I like that, <laughs> that I don't have to pick anything out of this right here. Looking good. Do you see all those threads on that fabric right there? Well, it's because I've already tried basting it once and it was crooked on there. So this is attempt number two. <laughs> so I tried something new. I took my grandkids play mat and taped the backing down to it. It worked pretty good, I have to tell you. You see, in order to get any type of plush minky backing nice and flat and straight, it needs to be stretched out as far as it can so that way it doesn't shift. You can see here that it is rolled up on a pool noodle and I also did that with the quilt top and you can follow my pool noodle video on how to do that. The play mat was so big, my quilt fit almost the entire surface area. For today's process, I first sprayed one end with the 505 and then I laid my quilt top down. And remember, it was on a pool noodle, so it was really easy to roll it out. Once I had one of the ends connected, then it was time to spray more 505 down and then continue to keep rolling out that pool noodle with the quilt top on it, being sure to press all of that cotton quilt top down with my hands. I do know some quilters will tape their backing down to a floor, like a hardwood floor, linoleum floor, something like that. And you can totally do that too. But I found with this, watch this right here, you can literally shift this wherever you want. Say you need to even pull it closer to you, you can even do that. It's so lightweight. And here I'm showing you, in the end, I found that binder clips work totally better than the tape. This mat was so movable and so flexible, I could even flip it up like I'm about to show you here, flip it up and over. I even put my knees on that pad to base the rest of the quilt and then rolled it out some more, flipped it up yet again because these mats have creases in them so you can fold it. And that really helped out too. I always take the extra step and pin based all of my quilts, even if I've used 505. I don't know why I double do that, but I do just to make sure, especially with Minky, because I do not want any shifting whatsoever. I don't want to catch any of the backing and make it buckle in the backs. Now, I wasn't sure if this was going to work on this mat or not. So I wasn't sure as I was doing it if I was going to bring it to you all or not. But let me tell you, it ended up working. And I will use this method again. So I had to bring this to you and show you how I did this. Here's a shot coming up of the entire quilt top and backing all sandwiched together and it's still on this mat. And then I just unclip it or untape it and take it off. Here I'm holding it up so that you can literally see how nice this is sandwiched together. My machine is made by Juki. It's a TL18 QVP. I purchased this machine specifically because you can turn it on its side for free motion quilting. This right here is the exact setup I use for every free motion quilting job. You see those things hanging in the background on the left and the right? Those have binder clips on them. I clip those to my quilt sandwich so that there is no drag when I am trying to push that quilt top around this table right here. I purchased this extra large acrylic table that slides on the side of this Juki, and boy does it work. It works so well 
that now I am a Juki Junkie affiliate and using any of my links to purchase any of their machines only helps the sewing channel out. For me and my quilts, I always do a subtle quilt design when they're so patchworky busy like this. A very simple meander is perfect for quilts like this and quick and easy. Here I just wanted to show you how I used one of my hanging clips that I use for free motion quilting as I put the binding on my quilt to take care of all of that heaviness over here. So that's just another tip for you. This right here is a compensating presser foot from Juki. It is awesome for binding quilts. It's my newfound love when it comes to binding quilts, <laughs> especially when you're doing a wraparound binding. So you can see here that I've taken up to about an inch away from the side of the actual quilt top. I've cut that all off. I've folded this over and clipped all along the edge here. And next, I'm going to press this edge right here up against that chunky part of the compensating presser foot. So you can see there it nests right up next to that chunky part. You just have to make sure that everything is nice and snug within here because it's going to catch about a quarter inch or so of this edge as I sew. I'm gonna go forward and then back. Now I'm just going to slowly move through stitching down a quarter inch on this binding. Unclip, lift up every now and again, recheck that you are really close to the edge there. You are nudging this binding right up over that quilt top edge. I mean, this really glides through crazy good. It's amazing. Now I just wanna show you this right here. This is that edge all along the back, what it looks like. I mean, it's absolutely perfect. Turn it toward the front. Everything is nice and in there. If you see some stragglers like that right there, we can cut those when we go to trim this binding right here because we have to trim this yet. This does not fray after it's been cut. It makes a perfect binding on a quilt. You don't have to hem it or tuck it or anything like that. It, you just sew it and we'll trim right along there. And you'll see, it'll be perfect. Oh my word, check out this beautiful crumb cake quilt. I am in love. It turned out so good. After I was done binding it after the free motion quilting, I then washed it and dried it. And the measurements did shrink up a bit, but that's okay. It has that beautiful crinkle effect that we all love. And check out that plush backing with that free motion quilting on it. Oh yeah, it is so comfy. Oh friends, I know this was a long tutorial but I hope it was worth it for you as a quilter to watch it and learn something new maybe. Look at your screen right now. There are videos around me on this screen that I have handpicked just for you if you liked today's tutorial. Click on one of them so that we can keep learning together. Until next time on The Sewing Channel, take care.